So what's really going on in Afghanistan and Pakistan? Well, maybe we should ask WikiLeaks.org and its editor, Julian Assange. He's released more than 90,000 Afghan war records to the public, and it's being called the biggest leak in intelligence history. RT producer Lucy Kafanov has more. Listen. It is a bleak portrait of America's nine-year war in Afghanistan. The massive leak of secret U.S. military files brought to light by the whistleblowing website WikiLeaks. The amount of information is shocking in scope, if not in content. Nearly 92,000 documents that paint a devastating image of a war that shows little signs of letting up. These are the war logs, the initial efforts by news organizations to make sense of the WikiLeaks gold mine. Much of the information simply expands on what was already known. Covert military units hunting down militants without trial. Hundreds of civilians killed, covered up by the military. Pakistani officials aiding the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. And a growing insurgency that has not been quelled by U.S. efforts. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange says he hopes the information will help change U.S. war policy. We can see that some material has potential for a substantial uh, human rights reform. And this is one of those cases. So we put in a little bit of extra effort uh, to try and get the material well looked at and well publicized. The United States has spent more than $300 billion on the war in Afghanistan, a conflict that has claimed the lives of more than 1,000 U.S. troops. And so the leak comes at a particularly bad time for this White House, as it struggles to maintain support for an unpopular war amid growing questions about the surge. Besides being against the law, it has the potential to be very harmful to uh, those that are uh, in our military, those that are cooperating with our military, and those that uh, uh, are working to keep us safe. Already, rumblings on Capitol Hill indicate that the leaks may indeed affect U.S. war policy. The chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, John Kerry, issued a statement saying that the leak raises serious questions about the reality of America's policy towards Pakistan and Afghanistan. It will take weeks, if not months, to go through all of the information to piece together the on-the-ground details of the Afghan war. For now, the leak, one of the largest in military history, leaves all too many questions unanswered. Lucy Kafanov, RT, Washington. And Lucy joins me now for more in our RT studios. Uh, Lucy, you know, you mentioned something interesting in the piece. You said that a lot of this stuff that was released was already known if you followed the war uh, in Afghanistan and the situation in Pakistan closely. So why are the other media outlets so shocked about this then? Well, because it's WikiLeaks and the rest of the mainstream media has finally caught on to WikiLeaks, this, you know, shadowy organization that releases classified information that we've been onto for quite some time now. And it's interesting because, you know, we've been in this conflict in Afghanistan for nine years now. I mean, we've spent close to $300 billion on this conflict, and yet it takes some sort of a release of classified information telling us sort of what we already knew to get the other outlets to cover this war effort. It's a little bit frustrating, I can, I can imagine. And also you had a, a, sod, a sound bite from Robert mm -hmm. Gibbs, uh, uh, White House press secretary there, where he said that this was against the law. What exactly was he referring to? And talk a little bit about the legality issues here, uh, not just for Julian Assange, but for his team and perhaps uh, those people that provided this information to him. Well, I don't know the exact details of the legality of the specific leak, but of course, as you can imagine, many governments would be really frustrated when there's an organization that can't be traced to any one country that publishes information that governments don't want seen. And of course, this is part of Julian's mission. That's, you know, his entire quest in life is to eliminate bad governance and hold corporations and governments accountable for violations of human rights and other so-called human rights abuses. Um, he essentially runs this entire website from his backpack. He's always on the move. Um, when we had him here in our studios a few months ago when the uh, collateral murder video came out, he went straight into the green room and started doing all of the work on, you know, WikiLeaks and, you know, didn't, didn't waste any time with that. And so the website and this entire new, I guess, arena of journalism really rests on him and being able to evade governments that are after him. And you had an interesting quote from Senator John Kerry in there. Mm -hmm. Any indication that this, uh, these leaks may now change 
the conversation when it comes to uh, what's going on over there in, in, in both Afghanistan and Pakistan, on the Senate floor, on the House mm -hmm. floor? I think they might be a, a fodder for new press releases. Whether they'll actually change the conversation beyond new press releases, I'm not sure about that. I mean, we've seen all kinds of damning information come out about both the conflict in Iraq, the conflict in Afghanistan, and yet year after year, the Congress passes the budget and funds the continuation of our policies there abroad. I mean, it doesn't seem like there's anything that changes people's minds about the actual conflict and whether we should be involved there. So no, I'm not hopeful that we'll see any legitimate change in policy, but I think we might see some more press releases over the week. RT's Lucy Kafanoff keeping on top of all those details for us.